here. It's all over. It is all over. The atheists have been defeated. These motherfuckers have been caught on their bullshit. <laughs> and Vittle Fay X is the truth. Vittle Fay X shut them down. I'm going to tell you just how, I'm going to show you and tell you just how pathetic and ignorant and stupid these atheists are. My God, this is just beautiful. They're angry. They have so much rage and hate in them. Then I'm going to show you proof for what the Bible says, and then I'm going to show you that the earth cannot be billions or even millions of years old. Rather, the earth is only 6,000 years old, around there, like the Bible says. The dating methods that evolutionists rely upon to assign millions and billions of years to rocks are very inconsistent and based on unproven and questionable assumptions. Dating methods that use radioactive decay to determine age assume that the radioactive decay rates have always been constant. Yet, research has shown that decay rates can change according to the chemical environment the material being tested is in. In fact, decay rates have been increased in the laboratory by a factor of a billion. What utter crap. So according to Venom Fang X, all you have to do is take your radioactive waste from your nuclear power stations and subject it to a different chemical environment and bingo, you have neutralized your radioactive waste. Let's take, for instance, arguably the nastiest radioactive isotopes, such as cesium-137 and strontium-90. They have half-lives of about a hundred years, which means they release half of their radioactive nastiness in about a hundred years. The nastiness of these isotopes is a combination of, firstly, the fact that they release half of their radioactivity in a relatively short period of time, comparable to the human lifespan, and secondly, they are quite readily absorbed by animal life. Stuff with half-lives of billions of years, such as the U-238 found in depleted uranium, is really not that much of a radiation hazard, as it will release almost none of its radioactive nastiness in the human lifespan. Anyway, so Venom Fang X claims all you have to do is subject the nuclei to a different chemical environment, and bingo, you can accelerate the decay by a factor of a billion. Great, so according to Venom Fang X, you can neutralize the radiation threat from cesium-137 and strontium-90 in about 10 seconds. While the treatment of long-term radioactive waste such as iodine-129, with a half-life of about 17 million years, could essentially be neutralized in about a month. Regrettably, Venom Fang X is talking crap, and we have no viable methods for accelerating radioactive decay. Otherwise, I can assure you the radioactive waste industry would be all over it. Dating methods that use radioactive decay to determine age assume that the radioactive decay rates have always been constant. Yet, research has shown that decay rates can change according to the chemical environment the material being tested is in. Okay, in order to understand why this is bullshit, you need to understand the concept of energy. So let's start with the idea of a black body. The spectrum of light emitted by a body will be commensurate with its temperature. For instance, take the Earth, dump it in deep space and look at it. The surface of the Earth is about 300 degrees Kelvin. That's about room temperature, meaning that the Earth would have a black body radiation in the infrared. Now take the Sun and dump it in deep space. It has a surface temperature of about 6000 Kelvin, meaning that it has a black body radiation in the white light region. Okay, now we've sort of made the connection between temperature and black body radiation. What can we do with this? Well, various energy photons interact with matter in which the possible energy states, be they nuclear spin, rotational, vibrational, electron excitement, core electron excitement, or nuclear excitement, are comparable to that of the photon. Take, for instance, the eye. The photosensitive parts of the eye absorb in the visible and turn that absorbed energy into a signal. However, if the energies are too high, for instance, X-rays, then they will not interact with the photosensitive parts of the cell. And similarly, the same thing happens if the energies are too low, for instance, radio waves. Now, Venom Fang X says that the chemical environment, that's basically the electrons around the nucleus, can have an effect on the nucleus state. Not even close. The chemical environment has zero effect on the nuclear state of the atom. I mean, the chemical environment of the nuclei is about as effective as changing the nuclear decay rates as your eye is at seeing radio waves. 
This is why there is no effect of pressure, temperature or electronic environment of the nucleus on the nuclear transitions responsible for radioactive decay. In fact, decay rates have been increased in the laboratory by a factor of a billion. Uh, no. The only real control we have over nuclear decay is by firing things into the nucleus, such as protons, neutrons and the such like, and making either activated or unstable nuclei that decay faster or slower. Regrettably, the only places you're going to get a decent flux of these sorts of particles at these sorts of energies are at research facilities that are actually geared up to study that sort of thing. All such dating methods also assume a closed system, that no isotopes were gained or lost by the rock since its formation. Quite so. A quick lesson on radiometric dating. Firstly, you need to know that nuclear decay changes the atomic number of the nucleus and subsequently changes the chemical properties of the atom. Secondly, you need to know that chemicals can spontaneously form structures such as crystals and minerals, etc. So, for instance, radium might be quite good at making a mineral, while radon is notably not. Diffusion of atoms within the rock are essentially non-existent. Once the rock forms, the atoms are essentially locked there in perpetuity. So when a mineral forms, you can start the clock. At some later time, you can look at the mineral, and from the ratio of daughter products and the lack of father products, you can tell when the mineral was formed. This is also the reason why it is arguable that the polonium halos that the creationists say prove the instantaneous formation of the Earth are even caused by polonium. The expected daughter products of the polonium decay, such as lead-206, are curiously all missing. Plus, of course, there are no polonium halos in the Precambrian granite. Indeed, the halos only occur in rock that has been significantly reworked by geological processes. It's common knowledge that hydrothermal waters at temperatures of only a few hundred degrees centigrade can create an open system where chemicals can move easily from one rock system to another. In fact, this process is one of the excuses used by evolutionists to reject dates that don't fit with their expectations. Uh... Professional stupidity. Yeah, that's right, volcanism is a good place to get mineral formation because hot pressurized water is good at dissolving stuff. This is why many of the minerals that form spontaneously on Earth do so in geologically active areas. But the answer is simple. You don't use radiometric dating on open systems, or if you do, you make sure that it's clear what you've done. Venom Fang X's statement that this somehow invalidates the method of radiometric dating is as stupid as saying, evolutionists think that watches can be used to keep time. However, if a watch has a flat battery, then it keeps bad time. So the evolutionist claim that watches can be used to keep time has been disproven. What's not commonly known is that the majority of dates are not even consistent for the same rock. Furthermore, 20th century lava flows often register dates in the millions and billions of years. So Venom Fang X somehow thinks the mere existence of a composite material disproves all dating methods. Yeah, that's right. If you have a composite material, you expect the different parts of the same material to have different ages. This is like looking at someone's wallet and finding out the person's 35, but the receipt tells you his genes are only two weeks old, hence invalidating the method of looking at someone's ID as a method of assessing age. Geochemists are not stupid. They understand composite materials, how they form, and how to treat them for dating purposes. All age dating methods rely upon unproven assumptions. Yeah. Just like to reach the conclusion that you watched this video, you had to make the unproven assumption that photons travel in a straight line over time in a reproducible fashion, and that these photons that you received can somehow be used to construct a realistic model of what actually happened in reality. Yeah, crazy unproved assumptions that prove nothing.